Hello, this is H1. Fixing the camera. <laughs> All right. Hey, hello. How you doing? This is H1. We're going to be running it back with another episode talking about chess knowledge, chess wisdom, and chess understanding. Today, we're going to be going over one puzzle and one grandmaster game that we can learn from. And this grandmaster game that we're, that we're going to be going over was all the way back in 1930 which is crazy. Let's continue right quick. Who do we got in here? We got almost, almost donut, almost donut season. Okay. Hey, how you doing? What's up, Chappie? How you doing? Welcome to the stream. Do a Mikhail Tall game, please. Nah, not this stream. Not this stream. We got Loco in the building. Hey, what's up? How you doing? We got Carter. Carter, the creator. Sup? And yeah, that's pretty much it. Let's get into this puzzle that is right behind me. Let me put on some music first though. Is this not copyright? Yeah, this is not copyright. Let me cut this on right quick. All right. Hey Loco, how you doing? You didn't miss anything, don't worry. What is the best move in this puzzle behind me? What is the best move? It is white to move. It is white to move. What are we doing here? We got our king on the e6 square. We got the bishop on d4. And we got our opponent's king on the e3 square, attacking our e4 pawn. What is the best move for white? How y'all doing? Do your thing, 21. Do your thing. <laughs> King takes on F6. Okay, we got the first suggestion by Loco, which is correct. Because after King takes on F6, King takes on E4. And this is where the real puzzle starts. What is the next follow-up move? What is the next follow-up move after King takes on F6? Loco, you are correct. I'm waiting on the comments. Let's get to it. King E6. All right. So is it King E6 or King G6? Let's do a poll right quick. Is it King E6 or King G6? We're going to do a quick poll. Smile for King E6. Cry for King G6. Smile for King E6. Cry for King G6. Okay, we got 400 people in here. Make sure to give me some likes so that we can get the engagement up. Got to get the engagement up, so let's get to liking. We got to at least hit like 10,000 likes, especially after the puzzle. We got Aiden in the building. What's up? Aiden is in the Discord, so, you know, he's very prevalent all the time. All right. So a lot of people's crying, but guess what? Let me explain right quick why King E6 is the best move other than King G6. After King G6, it's a draw. What happens here? Because it seems like that you just got the, the free line to push up the F pawn to promote on the F8 square. But you would have to think about what is Black's best move, which is King D5. You would think that the king would go to F4 to take on G4, but this is losing for black. But if he goes to King D5, if you push up F6, King C6, King, I mean not King, but F7, Bishop C5 stopping the pawn, the A7 pawn cannot move or King B7 will happen. And so now black is stopping both pawns. That's why king has to move to e6 that takes away that d5 square from his opponent. So after d5, king f4, what is the best move from here? Bro, Isaiah Thomas again. Hey, calm down. Calm down with the names, bro. What do we got here? After king f4, what is the best move? Martin? Yep, f6. 
Martin and Loco. F6. After F6, E4. What's happening after E4? F7. And then after Bishop C5. After Bishop C5. Final defense for black. A lot of people are saying F7. We got two pass pawns. Now the final move. A7. Bishop takes on A7. And then what? F8. Manchito, you are correct. F8, promoting the pawn, checking the king, and now white is winning. Good job. Okay, that was just a warm-up. We got an amazing game today. I found um, a game, Nathan Manheimer against Aaron uh, Nimzovic, which this is a really popular game um, just because he really solidified, <laughs> he really solidified the position. And then plus two, he put Zugzwang, the concept of Zugzwang, into a whole nother level. And I want to just show you that. Oh, great. But in this next game, he stopped all of White's pieces, even though... It, it, it's crazy. I'm just going to have to show y'all. He stopped all of White's pieces, though, even though they still had their minor pieces and major pieces still on the board. How y'all doing? Hopefully y'all doing good. It's a late night, but I'm still streaming every single day. I don't give up. And if you solve the puzzle, then you will definitely enjoy the free Discord that's in the TikTok description. Where you can connect with others and play chess games until your heart is content. I'll be setting up tournaments pretty soon in the free Discord for everybody to enjoy weekly. All right, let's get to it. Also, Zook Zwang is, is the only concept I still struggle with in end games. I get it, but I can't see it. Uh, you'll get it pretty soon. Are you also on Twitch? Yeah, I am on Twitch. It is H1 Chess. I haven't streamed on Twitch in a while, but hey, if you want to follow my Twitch account, it is H1 Chess. Let's continue. We got the first move, E4. What do y'all think um, Nimzovic first move is? What do y'all think Nimzovic first move is? And we are playing as the black pieces. We got the move E5. Yeah, we got to be classy. We got the move E5. E Wait a minute. We can't do E4. Our opponent already did E4. What is wrong with you? <laughs> so after E4, C6, is it the opening name after him? Not actually his opening. Um, yeah, he does have an opening actually named after him. C6, C5. Well, we're... We're playing on a black side right now. Knight f6 is aggressive. Yep, that move is aggressive, loco. Um, knight f3, d3. Yeah, he played the French defense. I didn't, I didn't, actually, I think I've seen one person say this move. And the move was e6. After doing e6, d4, d5, knight c3, and this is all opening theory right now. Bishop b4, e takes on d5. After e takes on d5, e takes on d5. Then we got the move knight f3. After knight f3, knight to e7. Then bishop d3 was played, just developing pieces, following the opening principles. After knight b to c6, then we got the move h3, preventing the move bishop to g4, pinning the knight to the queen. Most grandmasters hate that move, so that's why they take the extra time to do the move h3 uh, instead of developing a piece or castling their king. After h3, bishop f5 was played. Bishop f5, bishop takes on f5. 
knight takes on f5. Then the move kingside castle was played by Nimzovich opponent. After kingside castle, what do you think his next move was? Oh, so now we got the first gifter. We got my history in the building. Oh, crap. It's probably inverted. Give me one sec. There we go. We got we got a candy cane from My History Verified. Yeah, Martin loves the French. What is the next move by Nimzovich? What do you think he played after White Castle? We are playing for the black pieces, if you're just not joining. Short side castle. All right. That is reasonable, but he played a different move. Which is somewhat better. What move do you play here as the black pieces? Knight e3, knight d4, knight c e7, knight d4. Okay, we've got a lot of moves here. F6, d4, horse eat pawn. What? No. <laughs> we're just losing, we're just losing a piece there. Knight takes on d4 is a bad move. If you're just now beginning on playing chess and you just started this month, I do have a beginner playlist that you can learn from. Reisker, you are correct. You played the move bishop takes on c3, ruining white's pawn structure. Because after b takes on c3, look at these double pawns on the c-file. And now white has three pawn islands, and black has two pawn islands. After b takes on c3, now black decided to castle. And so he thought that this position was more advantageous than keeping that bishop that was on the b4 square. After castle and king side, queen d3, then we got the move knight to d6. After knight d6, knight g5, and then the move g6 was played because queen takes on h7 was um, threatened here. And that would have been checkmate if g6 wasn't played. After g6, bishop f4, attacking the knight, putting some pressure on the knight. What do you think black's next move was? D4 was already protected. Sup, just join. What game are we playing? Um, we playing the game of Nathan Manheimer against Aaron Nimzovich. And we're on Nimzovich's side, the black pieces. What is the next best move here for the black pieces? Yeah, but now you can... You can't pressure it at all. Rookie one. Wait, we're playing for the black pieces. A lot of people want to do F6 right now, attacking a knight. All right. We still want to develop pieces, though. We want to develop pieces while attacking pieces. Threatening the queen. Knight E4. Rook E8. Knight b4, rook e8. Loco, you are correct. He played the move queen f6. Queen f6. After queen f6, attacking the bishop. White played the move bishop to d2. Running away. And we want to see our opponent's pieces run away because that can indicate that we have the initiative. So after bishop d2, what do we play next? What are we playing next as the black pieces after bishop d2? Oh, that was a better move by a long shot. Yeah, we're developing a queen while attacking a bishop at the same time. It was a really good move. Rook f to e8, rook e1, rook f to e8. Reasonable, getting the rook developed. But now Nemzovich just started hating the knight that white had. And that's a big hint. Nemzovich started hating the knight that white has on the g5 square. And that's a really big hint. Okay. Cozy, you are correct. 
Whoa, you are correct. I am, you are correct. He played the move h6, attacking a knight. After knight f3, we are definitely in a better position. h6, king h7, protecting the h6 pawn since the bishop on d2 was attacking a pawn. Then white did the move knight to h2. After knight to h2, queen h8 was played. An inaccurate move, of course, but hey, this was back in 1930s. Queen e3 was played attacking the pawn. After queen e3, queen g7. I don't know what these grandmasters are doing right now. Then the move queen f3 was played. After queen f3 attacking the pawn, then knight e4 was played, putting a knight in the center attacking the bishop on d2. White did the move bishop c1. Bishop c1, and then f5 was played. Now, I just want to stop the position right quick and just get y'all take on which side you would play here. Smile if you think that white is better. Cry if you think that black's position is better. Smile if you think that white is better in this position. Cry if you think that black is better in this position. You have to have a good intuitive type of mindset when you're playing chess too. And that only comes with experience. But which side would you take? All right, a lot of people are crying right now, so I'm just gonna assume that most people would take black side. Now, if you look at this position, there's a lot of things that is starting to go wrong for the white side. For example, we don't know exactly what this bishop, rook, and other rook is doing in this position. We don't know exactly what this knight on h2 is moving to anymore. Since the move f5 was done, knight g4 is not even a option. And then plus two, this knight on e4 is a monster. It's a beast. It's not only attacking a lot of squares in the center, but keeping an eye on that c3 square. And then plus two, all black has to do is get one more piece into the game, and white should be toast very quickly. After the move f5 was played, queen v3 was played, which not the best move. The computer actually wanted white to do a move like a4, which is insane too. So after queen d3, then what are we doing next? Loco, you are correct, actually. He did the move knight to a5 because a good thing to keep in mind is the weak squares of your opponent. And this c4 square is definitely a weak square to take advantage of. So after knight a5, f4 was played. Then the move queen to d7 was played. After queen d7, knight f3, trying to get that knight back into the e5 square. The knight is finally back in a position. Then queen c6 is played. Because here's the thing. If your opponent has double pawns, this pawn is hard to defend. This knight is already attacking the c3 pawn. This bishop is like the only thing that can defend this pawn. We want to keep our opponent on the run and on the defensive. After queen c6, knight to e5. Then we got the move queen to e6. Queen to e6. After queen to e6, rook b1 attacking the b7 pawn, but cannot capture it because that knight on a5 is protecting it. What are we doing next after rook b1? Thanks for the follows. I appreciate it. I just really like outposts. Yeah, outposts are really good. And just to, and just to tell y'all principle, once you get a knight in a really good outpost, it's better than a rook. It's worth more than a rook if you get a knight on a really good outpost. Bishop a1, knight g3. This next move is very simple and it's strategic. Well, that's not true at all. Well, you just have to play a lot of chess to figure out that a knight on an outpost is really good. And usually grandmasters sacrifice an exchange to have a dynamic position with the knight on the outpost. So we got knight c4. Now everybody's saying knight c4, but after knight c4, this rook can just capture on b7. So we can't do knight c4 yet. All the people who want to do knight c4, you have to do one other move first. I'm a nm, but I will start playing more chess. <laughs> 
bro, you're setting up you, you own game. You have no clue. What? What are you talking about? I'm always told that. I'm always told that an outpost knight is worth more than a rook. Yep, it is. I'm gonna have to find a game to show y'all why a knight on an outpost is mo worth more than a rook. But hey, we'll see if I can find one. Yeah, quotes. You are correct. He did the move b6, and now doing the move b6 releases this knight to go to the c4 square. After b6, king h2, white isn't really doing anything for real. Then, now what are we doing? What are we doing in this position? And keep the lights going. Keep the engagement rolling. All right? We got to keep the lights going. If we don't, then we're not going to popularize chess on TikTok. And this is a free lesson, literally. It's free. <laughs> Matt Gibbs, you are correct. Elo Dub, you're correct. Sugar, you're correct too. He did the move Knight C4. And now we got these powerful knights on both of these outposts in the center of the board. Are y'all really trying to tell me that these two knights are not worth rooks right now? These two knights are really powerful taking control of a lot of squares, and even this queen can go to a lot of squares because of these powerful two knights. After knight c4, bishop e3, just trying to force his opponent to at least take this bishop because white would love this knight to take this bishop instead of staying right there, but that would be a bad decision. What do y'all think black did next? Congra uh, complete control over the dark squares. Yes, yes. When you have a knight on the outpost, you, you control a lot more squares. And since the knight is on a light square, you're controlling all the dark squares, which makes it hard for white to improve in this position. Hey, good morning, Jojo. How you doing? What are we playing next, though? This is a really famous game. Trey Roy, you are correct. We got the move G5 that was played. G5. And another principle too, if the center is locked up, then you can attack on the flank. If the center is locked up, then you can attack on the flank. So that's why the move G5 was played. After G5, white didn't want the position to open up because that would be bad for the white pieces, even though um, they don't have a lot of space to even deal with. So he did the move G3. After G3, rook F6 was played, rook B to e1, then the move rook a to g8. Now definitely, if the position opens up on the king side, this king on h2 will be definitely vulnerable. Now, that's why he did the move bishop c1. And then what do you think he played next? In this position, all we're trying to do is restrict white's movements as much as possible. What's an outpost? An outpost is just a weak square in your opponent's camp that you can put a piece there and it really cannot be captured without consequences. It would really be good if white had two light square bishops to take these knights, but he doesn't. So these knights can just pretty much be free to just stand there and look pretty. This knight would really be good to trade right here, but yeah. That knight trade right there, pawn takes on c4, attacking the queen. The queen has to move somewhere. That, that isn't pretty either. Pawn g4, king g2. We're playing for the black pieces. Everybody that is joining right now, we're going over this game, Nathan against Nimzovich, and we are playing the black pieces. What are we doing next? What are we doing next? D Dominic? D Dominic? Yeah, you are correct. You played the move b5, b5. Now, if knight takes on c4, b takes on c4, which is horrible, which is really bad. Knight moved back to f3, trying to do something. And then, what nasty move happened next? What nasty move happened next? Hey, see you later, um, quotes for brokies. I appreciate you. I remember your um I remember your username too. 
Poet, you are correct. He played the move G4, G4 attacking a knight in the pawn on the H3 square. After that, after H takes on G4, what are we doing next? Can you say my name? Kayla's plays. What's good? Andrew Gate fans? <laughs> Take it back? No. <laughs> yes, yes, everybody's saying it. Rook takes on g4. It would be somewhat of a mistake to take with the pawn because rook takes on g4 is a lot more powerful. And look at this position. Look at this position. Even if rook sacrificed themselves on the e4 square, it's still a horrible position after either f takes on e4 or d takes on e4. And that's why a knight on an outpost is worth more than a rook. All right? So after rook takes on g4, or rook takes on g4, knight g1, what are we playing next? And we're trying to cause more threats. Thanks for the gifts. I appreciate the two roses. Um Guanaco. Yeah, Echo 1315. Thanks for the roses. I appreciate it. We're trying to cause more threats here. Rook G3. Mm, yeah. After Rook G3, Queen takes on G3. Knight takes on G3. Rook takes our Queen on E6. We gotta be careful. And everybody who's saying to move Rook G6, there are two Rooks that can go to G6. You gotta tell me exactly which Rook can go to G6. You gotta tell me exactly which rook can go to g6, or which rook that you want to go to g6. Rook f to g6, yep, you are correct. Attacking the g pawn, the move that y'all wanted to do. And this pawn is only defended by the queen and king, so why not target it? After that, white played the move rook f3, protecting the pawn. What are we doing next? We gotta keep the threats going and keep the initiative. Our opponent really cannot do anything. All of white's pieces are in this little cage that is going on here because of all of black's pieces that are taking control of the light squares. And this pretty much is another strategy which is definitely called um, prophylaxis. Just making sure that we are watching over our opponent's plans and still accomplishing our plans. Knight g3. Well, we're not taking that. We're not taking our pawn yet. If knight takes on g3, rook takes our queen on e6. Somebody just said it. Jose, you are correct. The move that was played here was queen g8. After queen g8, knight e2 just to fit in the pawn. All of white's pieces are locked up right now. What happens here? I like this game because all the moves are pretty much self-explanatory. Thanks for getting to 15K likes. I appreciate every single one of you who has been liking up a storm. But we still got, well, how many do we got? 35,000 likes left. Let's get the engagement going. We are playing for the black pieces, all the people who are joining in right now. We are playing for the black pieces. Cope, 420, you are correct. You played the move, wait a minute. You played the move H5. I, I know you said H4, but I'm thinking that you meant H5. After H5, King G2, which is just horrible. What are we doing next? Not Rook H4. There's not really a follow-up after Rook H4. Thanks for the follow. Thanks for the share of the life. Who was that? Tom. Appreciate it. Yes, Sean Menayaga. Yep, you played the move H4 because you want to attack the pin piece. The G pawn cannot take on H4 because the Rook is pinning that pawn. Horrible position. So white did the move rook h1, pinning the h-pawn to the king. What happens next? 
Yep, start the carnage. This is horrible. These two knights is stopping all of white's major pieces. That is really bad when you see this in the game. Cozy, you are correct. He played the move Rook H6 to get out of the pin. So now, captures goes on the G3 square. White played the move Rook H3. And then after Rook H3, we got the move Queen G6. An accurate move. Actually, the computer wanted just H takes on G3, but hey, why give your opponent compensation at all when you don't really have to? After queen g6, bishop e3, white is still hoping that one of these knights would just take, just start taking pieces so that all these pieces can get out of jail and into the game. So after bishop e3, queen a6 happened. All these pieces were focused more on the king side, and now they forgot all about what was happening on the queen side. Bishop f2 defended the pawn. What's the next move here? Seems like a bunch of wasted moves. No, all these moves makes a lot of sense, actually. And most of the older game moves are more based on chess principles that we learn when we are beginners more than the modern chess. The modern chess, they be breaking all the rules. And it's like, oh, why does that work? Well... We learned in modern chess that some chess principles overrule other chess principles. So you could get away with a lot of things, especially in the opening when you see like players play moves like G4, G5, and like the first 12 moves. Wade Joseph, you are correct. Queen takes on A2 is the move that was played. Why not take the extra pawn? After Queen takes on A2, Bishop E1, there's really nothing for White to do. What happens here? And the plan is pretty self-explanatory, self right? We took the A pawn. We don't want to do any captures over here, but we have a pass pawn to push down, which is a big hint of what to do. What are we doing here? Knight E5, wow, that's, that's interesting. Queen B1. Uh, attacking a bishop, okay. Probably could have worked. There's a lot of moves that could have worked. A hap what was that? Happy Dragon? Happy Dragon 03, you are correct. And then now everybody's getting the move. Played the move A5 because how is how is White gonna stop this pawn? How is White gonna stop this pawn? From just rolling down the board after Queen B2, A4, A3, A2, Queen on A1. He moved the king to f1. After moving the king to f1, what do you think Nimzovich did next? Can't say I've ever seen anyone play so poorly to get stuck um, the way white is. Well, it happens. <laughs> it has happened multiple times. Just nobody has really seen it in this extreme measure. And there's so many pieces on the board, you really don't really you really don't expect this to happen in the middle game. Queen B1, everybody's saying Queen B1, pinning the bishop to the king. So now the bishop can't move. The rook only has the rook has no good squares. The queen has no good squares to go. This rook is like the only rook that can actually move, but this rook is protecting the G3 pawn. Where's this knight going to go? This knight has no good scores forward, so this knight can only go to... He can't even go to C1 without being captured. Probably just G1 and back. What is happening here? Knight G1 was played. What's the plan here? Let's continue on with the plan that we have for black. What about knight D2? Knight D2. Does knight d2 work here? Yep, knight d2 does work here. But sometimes grandmasters start uh, romanticizing about the position and they don't want to just take material. And he just went along with his previous plan. Sean, you are correct. Zudot, correct. 
Yeah. He played the move A4 because there's nothing that white can do to stop that pawn from queening. After A4, king E2, now we can finally move that bishop again. What happens next? 30k likes. Thank you. Let's reach the goal. How many, how many more? 17,000 likes left. Let's get it. we got to reach 50k likes for the stream. That's the goal of every single stream. I know your hands are hurting. Yes, he played the move A3. Just continue on pushing the past pawn. There's nothing really that white can do about this. After king E2, A3, rook F1 trying to stop the pawn at least. What happens next? Yep. Everybody should, should everybody should have saw this coming. A2. And look at this masterpiece. Just look at it. Just admire it. The good chess play playing going on here. Nathan really showed out <laughs> for the white pieces because I don't think this game has ever, I, I don't think I've ever seen a game like this in my life that goes over Zugzwang. If you look at all of white's moves, all of white's moves are pretty much useless. Black is allowed to do anything because of these knights on the outposts. The rooks are doing their job keeping these rooks and knight in check. Whatever capture white does, there's a consequence to pay. So in this position, white resign. Now this is a, this is an extreme case of Zuxwong that you probably won't get in your game, but at least you know what it looks like if you get in the middle game. Yeah, good game. Dap it up. I don't know if I can come back to chess if I got demolished in this manner. But, hey, you got to just keep on playing. And I'm thinking that's what Nathan did. And he admired the game afterwards. All right. 50K likes. We're doing 25 push-ups at the end of the stream. And for all the people that is here, I do have a free Discord in the TikTok um, description if you go there. There's a lot of people in the Discord. There's all, there's already over a hundred people if you want to join that Discord. And then plus two, I have a TikTok subscription Discord that you can join, which I'm more involved in. We do tournaments. I live stream the tournaments. Uh, whatever Discord that you want to join, hey, it's fine by me. But anyway, I got one more game. Dino Dubov against Sergei Karyakin. Let's go over it. Yeah, that was a good game. Oh, yeah, plus two with the TikTok subscription, you get like free priority comment. And emotes. If y'all want to spend the emotes right now for the people who is part of the TikTok subscription, you can. But those are the perks that you get. And I stream every single day. Even though sometimes I'm late, so what? I'm still here late at night trying to teach chess knowledge, chess wisdom, and chess understanding. How long has it been since I just didn't stream? I think it's already been like three weeks now. There we go. Y'all see Loco in the building. All right. Let's go over this last game. And we are the white pieces. Uh, Donnell Dubov rating is $26.99. And Sergey Karakin rating is $27.52. Let's see how um, Dubov demolished Sergey Karakin, even though... Sergey Karakin has a higher rating than his opponent. This game was in 2020 um, at the tournament. Um, the Landeris, Landeris, I don't know how to say that word, man. Abbe, I, I know that's a different language. It's a rapid challenge, right? 
Let's get to it. What do y'all think Donald Dubov played first? D4, we go modern. Yeah, he played the move D4 first. After D4, knight F6, then we got the move C4. After the move C4, E6, then knight F3, and D5. It transposed into a queen's gambit. It transposed into a queen's gambit after black played the move D5. After D5, knight C3, bishop E7, then we got the move bishop to g5 after bishop g5 knight b to d7 which goes into the three knights variation e3 h6 bishop moves to f4 and then king side castle we're going over all the open in theory because it's very self-explanatory you just got to develop all your pieces castle your king etc but this next move might disrupt what black is doing. What do you think Duboff played next? And this next move is pretty extreme. This next move is pretty extreme. Can you make a video about the Skoth Gambit? I don't even know what that is, but I'll look it up. Can you make a video about the Scotch Gambit? Yeah, I already made a video about the Scotch Gambit. Yeah, I don't know what the Scoth Gambit is, though. What is white's best move here? A lot of people saying knight a4, h4 killer. <laughs> y'all already want to push Hector? Just to give y'all a secret, we're not pushing Hector. We're pushing another pawn. We're pushing another pawn. We're not pushing Hector, though. And we're playing the white pieces to all the people that is joining right now. Not Adam either. Not Adam. We're sacrificing a pawn. Yes, yeah, somebody just said it. Somebody just said it. Look at this weird move. A-A-R-R. -R. He pushed up G4. G4. The third most popular move in this opening. It's only been played five times by Masters. After g4, black ignored, the, black ignored the flank attack by counterattacking in the center by playing the move c5. So, just to remember, if your opponent flanks attack you, flank attack you, you counterattack in the center. After c5, what do you think Duboff played next? <laughs> mouse slip. Nope, it's not a mouse slip. Because... Imagine this, if knight takes on g4, rook at g1 is a very powerful move. Get the rook on the same file as the king on g8, then a massive attack can start very quickly with rook g1, maybe bishop h6 in the future, and etc. After the move c5, Loco, you are correct, you played the move g5. Why not if you're going to push g4? After h takes on g5... What are we taking a pawn with? What are we taking a pawn with? Can you make a video about the Scotch Gambit, please? I already made a video about it. Look at my YouTube channel. It's Chess Knowledge with H1. I made a video about the Scotch Gambit already. Take what, bishop or knight? Oh, snap, is that? I didn't even know that you joined. Uh, Could have been me. Couldn't been me. Yeah, welcome. He took with the knight, though. He did knight takes on g5, even though the computer thinks that bishop takes on g5 is better. After c takes on d4, e takes on d4. It's very sketchy. We don't know what we're doing with our king, but we do know that Dubov has an amazing attack in the horizon. D takes on c4. Koryakin was like, okay, if you're going to push up the g pawn, I'm just going to open up the center and just figure out what, why your king is on the e1 square. After d takes on c4, what do y'all think Duval played next? Loco, you're correct. Am 
not the only one seeing a pork. Are we talking about knight takes on e6? If can't just f takes on e6? Rook c1. Um, not rook c1. F1 to c4. Oh, bishop takes on c4. Well, he did a different move. Pushing up Hector? Not yet. Maybe in the future. ND underscore F, you are correct. You played the move rook g1. After rook g1, knight to d5. Then the move queen c2 was played. After queen c2, bishop takes on g5. Bishop takes on g5. Attacking the queen. The rook is defending the bishop now. So black is going to have to do something against this threat on that diagonal. F6 was played. What are y'all playing next? What? The F is Hector. Hector, if you don't know, is this H2 pawn. It's our H pawn. That's Hector. All right? Sometimes we push up Hector to have an awesome attack against this king. Usually, when the king is feeding kettled on the king's side, we push up Hector. But I don't know if we're going to push him up this game. Because we're already starting a peace attack. Bishop h6 was played. After bishop h6, rook f7, defending the g7 pawn. What happens next? Queen g6. Just bringing all the pieces over there. Seemed like a good move. But that's not the move that he played here. Weirdly enough, we still got to develop pieces and get our king to safety. Killer JJ666, you are correct. <laughs> I would suggest you to change your username. But anyway, <laughs> Bishop takes on C4 is the next best move. Knight D, I mean Knight 7 to b6. Bishop moves back to e2. Then the move f5 was played to cut off the diagonal from the queen on the c2 square. What happens next? Toby Granger, you are correct. A lot of people want to do bishop h5, attacking the rook. Loco, you're correct. Crispy, you are correct. Queenside castle happened. Because even though you have this massive attack, we cannot forget that activity is king and chess. So we have to develop all of our pieces and get our king to safety before we have a full-fledged attack on our opponent. Okay, let me turn the music down because it's going to get wild pretty soon. Our opponent played the move queen h4, attacking the bishop, the pawn, and the f2 pawn. What is the best move here? Isn't putting the queen and king in the same file risky? It's only risky when your opponent has a rook on that same file. But it's okay unless your opponent... Like, if the opponent went to, like, rook c7, then it's risky. Bishop g6. Bishop g6 squares right here. There's not a bishop that can go to g6. We are playing the black... We are playing the white pieces. Jose, you are correct. Lucas, you are correct, too. Bishop g5 was played. After bishop g5, queen takes on f2. Then queen d2 was played. After queen d... Oh, crap. No! I went to the end of the game. After queen d2, bishop d7. What happens next? 
And just to give y'all a little hint, there's a whole lot of tempos that can happen on this queen on the F2 square. This is what happens when you just charge in with just the queen and nothing else. All the other pieces is behind this fifth rank, except for this knight, of course. But this queen charged in not knowing that it's going to be vulnerable instead of an asset in this position. A lot of people are saying rook f1, but there are two rooks that can go to the f1 square. There are two rooks that can go to the f1 square. Jojo, you're correct. Rook d1 to f1. After rook d1 to f1, queen takes on h h2. What are you playing next? Just try a knight on the outpost. Miracles? Yeah, it is. Bishop h6? We can't do bishop h6. And just because we're losing pawns doesn't mean we're in a bad position. We have a lot of activity that can happen. And them taking our Hector pawn gives us the opportunity to take control of the H-file. Frost, you are correct. G1 to H1. Attacking the queen. Then the queen moved back to D6. But it might be already too late. Rook h3 was played. Planning on doing a battery on the h-file. Threatening checkmate. Knight takes on c3. And after this, I'll let y'all figure this out. How do I join your Discord? Which Discord? I have a free Discord in the... I have a free Discord in the description on my TikTok account, and then I have a Discord with the TikTok subscriptions that has a lot more perks than that Discord. So it's two servers. Jojo, correct. I'm surprised that y'all not like trying to recapture the knight. But instead of recapturing the knight, the best move is to ignore that threat and do the move rook 1 to h1. Because you're threatening checkmate. Black captures the bishop on e2. Queen takes on e2. Queen c6. Check. King b1. And in this position, black only has one good defense, which is literally queen takes on h1. And this was a rapid game, just to let everybody know. After queen takes on h1, rook takes on h1, bishop c6 happened. What are we doing next? Am I late to the live? Yeah, we're at the last game row, row, but this game isn't completely done yet. It's only four more moves. Yeah, in this game, all the new people that joined, we are playing as Daniel Dubov against Sergei Kuryakin. We are the white pieces. Our opponent is the black pieces. They just sacrificed their queen, and now they're trying to get some type of active position with the pieces that they have left. Okay, Jose saying rook h5. Okay, yeah, the move that was played was rook h4. I think any rook was pretty good. You could have went to rook h3, rook h5, etc. As long as you moved the rook, that was fine. Bishop e4, check. King a1. Rook c8. This is a little bit dangerous, even though that we're up in material and we got a queen, we still have to be very careful. And this next move made our opponent resign. Can y'all find it? This next move made our opponent resign. 
Can y'all find it? A lot of scary things is happening right now. But we have to be confident and we have to have nerves of steel and be and just trust our calculation. Could have been me. Could have been me. It's correct. Is anybody else going to find a move? A lot of people saying queen e1, rook h8, queen h5. Let's go. I know. Mr. Whose username was that? Pav Pavy Cakes? Marquise Fencing? You're correct. The best move is queen h2, threatening checkmate again, and a big attack. And this may Sergey Kuryakin resign. This made him resign. Remember, if rook on c8 goes to c1, which I know a lot of people were scared of, but you have to look at all of your pieces, and especially that bishop on the g5 square that could just take that rook. So that's not an option for black. And once you realize that, you can ignore that and move on with your plan, attacking on the H file. You said, why not queen H5? Why not queen H5? After queen h5, rook f to c7. And there's not really a good follow-up. When you're doing batteries, there's two type, there's like a few type of batteries. Either have your most powerful piece in the front or have your most powerful piece in the back. And in this position, it's more important to have your most powerful piece in the back because if rook f to c7 happens now, then rook checks, king f7. Queen checks on h5, and etc. It's a little bit more powerful. All right. That was the last game. Pretty amazing. My teacher need to find this account. <laughs> Thanks for the gifts. I appreciate it. Martin, thanks for the gifts too. And then plus two. Uh, I do want to mention, because I don't mention this as often, but I do have a Patreon where I teach um, two classes twice a week for $50 a month. I don't mention that enough, but I'm just going to shamelessly plug that. And that's pretty cheap too, because most classes are a lot more. Trust me, I used to teach them. So whoever wants to learn how to play chess, improve way faster with a personal class, hey, I'll look into that. Trust me. It's about to be lit. We already got two people in there for that class. I can't wait to have more. Good night, brother. See you later, Marquise. No, it's fine, big dog. Plug your stuff. <laughs> I don't mention it enough, and there's the two people that joined, they were surprised that I even had that option. Where are the push-ups at? I'm going to be doing the push-ups in a minute. I just want to, oh yeah, I wanted to talk about the free Discord too. Sign up for the free Discord um, while you have time. It's in um, the account on my TikTok description. It's in that link in the TikTok description. How many people do we have in here right now? We have a lot. I can say that for sure. We have a lot of people in that, in that uh, TikTok description. All right. Okay, cool. Good night to you. It's daytime in our country. Okay, I joined the Discord. Thank you. Appreciate it. Based on this game, Duboff should be banned. Very suspicious. <laughs> Those moves wasn't even like top engine moves. When do you live? I go live every single day. What was the game before this one? Nathan something. Um, 
The game before this one was Nathan against Aran Nimzovich. Nathan against Aran Nimzovich. All right, let's do the push-ups right quick. Y'all going to do them with me? No, I didn't just start. I started an hour ago. We're doing 25 push-ups. Y'all going to go with me? All right. Whereas the Discord is in the description of my TikTok account if you go on my profile. That's where the Discord is. Or you can sign up for the TikTok Discord where I'm more involved. We play chess. Um, we play four-player chess. We're going to be streaming tournaments there, etc. You're going to have more perks. Three. Ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five. All right. Okay. Yeah, we hit the 50K goal. And plus, tomorrow I will be having um, the subchat only stream. If y'all ready for that. Dang, I can only do 16. It's okay. So shout out to everybody in the in the TikTok subscription. We will be having a sub only stream tomorrow. I'm going to be doing that once a week. And then after tomorrow, we're going to just continue on with the regular streams. So there you go. Does anybody have any more questions? All right, how's your day been? Oh, it's been well. I would have did the stream earlier, but some stuff came up. When we doing them voice chats again? Oh yeah, we can set that up again. Um, I need to set it up for a specific day each week. I liked it on Sunday though. I might just keep it on Sunday. Role of physical fitness and over the board chess. Yeah, physical fit fitness is really important, especially if you're trying to go into tournaments playing classical chess, because it takes a lot of effort to concentrate at a chess board for more than like most of those time controls are like over like two hours each. So that's like five hours at a chess at a chess board. Really interesting. What rating are you? My rating, my USCF rating is 1800 and my chess.com and leadchess.org rating, my online chess rating is around 2100. Do you go to tournaments? Not anymore. I got kids and I mainly teach chess. That's the thing about running a chess business. You can't really do anything else but the business. <laughs> I can't really train like I used to. How long have you been playing? I've been playing for over a decade. Is King's Gambit good for beginners? No, not at all. Not at all. Okay, how about that? We're gonna do voice chats every Sunday in the sub uh, in the TikTok subscription Discord. We're gonna do voice chats every single Sunday. Is Kane's Gambit a good opening for beginners? No, it's not. It is very sharp and tactical. Is 
this Queen's Gambit hard to do? Um, the Queen's Gambit isn't hard to do. The King's Gambit is. Oh, do you have a, a sub-only Discord? Yep, I do. I have a free Discord and I have a sub-only Discord. I have a free Discord and I have a sub-only Discord. The sub-only Discord gets perks like, um, like what I'm going to do tomorrow is a sub-only streams, which I will be doing, and I do weekly voice chats there. What is a good opening for beginners then? Probably like the London or the King's Indian Defense, things of that nature. Those are good openings. All right. I keep losing. If you keep losing, hey, you just got to get better. And I know that's like, hey, what do you mean, H1? Like, easier said than done. But you, you're just going to have that determination. I lost to my brother for the whole first year when I started playing chess. Until everything just clicked, that I started beating everyone. That's how it happens. It's not like a gradual, you improve. It's a one-day type of deal. You just start getting better. It's just like um, when cryptocurrency was a big thing. Like, it's not just a gradual build in your investment. It's like one day you just... Just, <laughs> just goes up all of a sudden. Martin, then why don't you play them? Uh, I think if you really learn a gambit and play at low elo, you can get some tricks in for easy wins. Yeah, that is true. What's the secret to getting that click to get better? Um, just keep on studying, going over books, going over puzzles, playing chess. And... Make sure, and this is the most important thing, to get your rating up really fast, make sure that you're looking at your losses. Study your losses and figure it out why you lost, and do not do that mistake ever again. If you do, it should be like a punishment. That's the only way you're going to get better really fast, and you're not going to be irritated about yourself. Great advice, if you're losing, just win. <laughs> yeah, just win. Have the fighting spirit. If Magnus Car have y'all seen that game Magnus Carlson against Gary K Gary Kasparov when Magnus Carlson was like twelve or thirteen? What what do you think his mindset was when he was facing the world champion back then? Do you think it was oh snap I'm gonna lose this game or do you think it was I'm probably gonna beat this old person and I'm about to go to sleep in front of his face? Do you have any tips for beginners? Play chess, study. Learn from your mistakes. And then plus two, just a secret, I would play losing chess or what is it called nowadays? It's on Lee Chess. It's called something specific. I'm looking it up right now. Anti-chess. Yeah, play anti-chess. Because I know beginners have a hard time of blundering pieces. So if you play a, a variant game like anti-chess, it will force you to see all of the captures, threats, and checks. But you got to be a legit low elo, not a smurf. <laughs> Play what? The London? Yeah, the London is a really easy opening for a beginner. After you learn the London, then you can go on to the more important stuff like um, tactics, strategy, etc. Because that's what you really need to learn. You don't really need to learn opening variations until you get um, around like, I don't know, like 1600 and etc. Thank you, bro. I'm going to go study. Yeah, go study. 25 push-ups every time you blunder a fork. Yeah, you should do 25 push-ups every time you blunder a fork. Make a consequence for yourself. Every time you blunder your queen, you should be doing like 10 push-ups. You shouldn't be blundering your queen. You don't see any grandmasters doing moves like that. So you definitely shouldn't be doing moves like that. Who do you think is the best chess player, Magnus or Hokaru? Magnus is very consistent. Um, I think Magnus Carlsen right now will definitely beat Hokuro Nakamura in classical, in classical matches. But Hokuro Nakamura is the best speed chess champion um, in the whole entire world at this point. And I'm really proud of him for beating Magnus Carlsen. What was that, Sunday? Yeah. What are your ratings? My rating is 1,800. Uh, my USCF rating is 1,800. And my chess.com rating is around 2,100.
Speed chess, what's your rank? I just told you, checkmate versus draw, having a hard time grasping that or closing it out. Um, you, are you drawing winning positions? Is that, is that what you're doing? What's your chess rating? What about Queen's Gambit? Did you look up the Nerd Snipe comic? Nope, I did not. What's the UFC, uh, USCF rating? A USCF rating is a United States uh, membership that you can sign up for to attend tournaments in the US. A FIDE rating is more international tournaments. USCF is more uh, in the US and America. It's two different ratings. When we mention somebody being the best in the world, they base it off of the FIDE rating though. Practice end games to avoid winnable draws. Yeah, if you're losing games that you should be winning, then you should definitely be avoiding, um, avoiding the drawing positions. And two, you should be drilling yourself on winning those games. So for example, what I used to do, I used to set up a position where like, for example, I would make the computer really hard, right? I'll make, I'll be like facing Stockfish on 3200 and I would do drills like queen, queen pawn versus rook pawn end games. And I'll just drill myself until, I don't know, I can get the wins a lot easier. That's what grandmasters do, so you should be doing the same. If you think you can beat me, join the Discord. Roll of a master, games for FIDE, 1750 or too early? Roll of a master, games for FIDE? I don't, I don't get that question. I don't think there's anything else, so I'm about to just head out. Why is the King's Gambit considered a, a good opening? Um, it's not really. It's a good opening if you know. Um, the, um, it's a good opening if you know all the theory, but if you don't, it's not really a good opening. It's not a practical opening, I can say. It is a good opening, it's just not practical. That's why you don't see elite grandmasters playing. Um, the King's Gambit. You really should just be playing what all the elite grandmasters play. Because once you get good at those openings, you don't have to switch it once you get to a certain rating. Thoughts on a duck, duck, goose? Be interested or challenged? Take a look at the four games with my opponent that I lost with French defense. What's the best opening if you don't know theory? The best opening if you don't know theory is the London system. Um... I used to play, I used to get away with not learning opening theory by playing um, C4 type of openings, like the English. You can get away with that. And then plus two, um, if you're playing black, um, playing like the King's Indian or, uh, I'm trying to figure out, so with black, it's kind of hard to avoid opening theory with black since you're already at a disadvantage. How would you rate the fried liver attack? I would rate the fried liver attack by asking you a question. Do you see elite grandmasters playing the fried liver? I'll see you tomorrow. See you later, loco. Has there ever been a game exactly repeated by two different people? Uh, yeah. Those games happen all the time. Always cut your strings just as you are wrapping up. What time do you usually start? Um, you would have to just join a Discord. I usually notify people before I start. A 2000 rated player told me I should play slow openings learn, and, learn, and learning French defense was one of them. Yeah, it is one of them, but you're just going to have to learn theory um, of the French defense and you'll be fine. What's this stick holding your road go? Um, it is called a, a small ring. I bought it with it. I wanted to get the actual road stick, but... It is what it is. All right. Cool. Have a nice day. We'll be back tomorrow. Or today. <laughs> Since it's late at night.